So Random Packers decided to show up today at the front door. It's like a box. It's like a perfectly square box. This is... Poetic. Poetic Spartan <laughs> Motor Razor plus 2024 Metallic Red New something. Something's going on. Of course, Poex is a new up and coming case company. Ooh, we got a little, got a little something in here. Something interesting. No, it's like, it's like we got a case for the new Moto Razor. Specifically, the, the Ultra variant, as you can see. Oh, we've had a sharp looking case. Of course, you got the hinge bit, which. Ooh, it's actually. It's actually spring loaded. So when it's on there, it's actually. Hmm. Nice. So the back spring loaded. So once it, the phone's fully open, it should lock in position and then it'll easily spring back shut. Interesting. No case stand or anything on this one? Right here. It, what? Yeah. Does that pick the kick stand? Yeah. No, it's on the hinge. Oh, I see. This be... Yeah, that pops up and it... This thing just pop up like this way? It pops out, yeah, and it'll allow you to watch it in open mode. But we'll figure that out later. We'll read the instructions because. I mean, it's clear how it's supposed to work, I assume. Yeah, well, when it's on the phone, I'll. And it has, you know, all the films that it wants you to actually mm -hmm. remove on it, so. Well, that was an interesting package to randomly just yeah. show up at the house. I guess this is to be continued. For later. Yeah. That's so cool. I love that. Well, you're being recorded on camcorder mode automatically for our test footage yeah. for yeah, oh, so wow, this so looks I was good like, too. I was like, oh, I just forgot my recording stand because I was probably we were probably recording on my 15 Pro Max or the best quality video. And I'm like, oh wait, we, since this is gonna be the Motorola Razor Plus video, we should probably record it on the phone itself. And I'm and I can see myself right now on that beautiful cover screen. Screw you, Samsung, that's a real cover screen. So yeah, we're probably just gonna 
put the phone on some kind of box or something on the coffee table in front of me, and yeah, uh, we got a new recording couch. It's about time to upgrade from this old thing. It's been good for many tech talks, probably five or six of them, but, but I guess it's about time we got a new couch. In fact, we got to stay on the side of, side of the road for a couch, but it's a good one, so yeah. <laughs> Oh, and also, random but separate video, we're gonna record a little new album that I bought here, so. Anyway, what I was saying before, this idiot behind the camera decided to press the power button and stop the recording, we might start doing some album reviews and maybe some other music reviews here pretty soon, so we'll see. Oh, looks well, like we're recording now, so here we are in camcorder mode. So, of course, you can see the preview right here, but on my end, this is what it looks like. So I can currently see myself, and you have the full widescreen on the smaller display, and on the side there, you actually have a bunch of quick controls. I'm pretty sure it's like tap to pause or play play video, you know, some quick controls. I, I don't know how to use this thing quite yet. So that way, when you're in camcorder mode, you can probably you can just use your thumb and do some quick adjustments. So you can probably zoom in, zoom out, adjust this and that. So yeah, very cool stuff. Okay, so it's been maybe about a year since we've done a proper flagship phone unboxing on the channel, but we have a new subject to, to look at, and it's the Motorola Razr Plus in the, in the United States, and in other places it's just known as, the, I think, I believe the, the Motorola Razr 2024 is, it is probably what it's called overseas. But it's about time that, well, my dad is a Motorola fanboy, and, has been, and he wanted to go back to a Moto on an AT on AT&T, and they had a really good plan, so yeah, but that's besides the point. So the Motorola Razr Plus 2024, <laughs> I guess I'll use both names there for the international audiences. So the Motorola Razr Plus 2024 has a 4,000 milliamp hour battery, actually 200 milliamp hours less than the regular variant, but it has a better chip in it. The HN, the 8S Gen 3 versus the Dimensity 7300. And of course, having the lower clock speed is actually almost better because with the lower clock, clock speeds in the flip phone, generally you should have better battery life because I because there's hardly any space. Because like whereas regular phones, like the 15 Pro Max here, you got all this real estate to actually dissipate heat. Whereas with these flip phones, you only have a small area up here. So less heat's always a good thing. And of course, the elephant in the room is probably this cover screen here. So I'm sorry, Samsung, but your cover screen's just not cutting it. Of course, we started off with this little tiny thing down in the corner, and Samsung has gotten pretty nice. But Motorola's just smashing them. First of all, it's almost like a, it's like a full-on phone. You have the time right here. You have all of your quick accesses up there like normal. And then... And it's just like a regular phone, practically. Like, as you can see, you got the essentials. You got camera, Pokemon Go, maps. You got all the essential apps there. The dial pad. And then, of course, you can you have the weather. And you can put all your own widgets in there. It's just phenomenal. You can, of course, you can swipe down from the top and have all your quick menus. Like, it's practically a regular phone. And, of course, if we just go ahead and launch Pokemon Go here, you can run any app on here that you want. And with... The Galaxy series with all the Galaxy flips. You had to get good lock, you had to do all this crazy stuff, which I played Pokemon Go on that little 1.9 inch display on the Z Flip 4. That was fun. But on this one, it's actually usable. Like, as you can see, here we are playing a full on game on the phone. You got, the, you got your Pokemon spawns, like, things, everything actually works on here. Of course, you're gonna have some weird things, like, you know, you have the huge search bar, you can barely see your Pokemon down there, but. Yeah, the whole point is, is you can actually do stuff. So then as we go ahead and open up the phone here, as you can see, we have a beautiful 6-point managed just display, P-OLED, 1080, 1080p, with a 22 by 9 aspect ratio. So another weird quirk of flip phones is that they're skinny and tall, just like Sony phones are. But if you're watching any proper movies on your phone, like if you're a Netflix binge watcher, that it's perfect because most movies are shot in 22 by 9 which will perfectly fill your whole screen and also this crease i don't even feel it if i'm actually trying to feel it yeah i'm not looking i cannot feel it and like even in the light when the phone's on any angle you basically can't see it even in the direct sunlight here maybe 
when it's the phone's more flat, it's probably a little more visible there, but it's hardly visible. And, it, and another plus about the hinge right here is that there's no ultra thin glass to be found under here. And the reason why that's a good thing is because it's not going to shatter. But what you might be thinking, ultra thin glass, it's better to have glass on a phone rather than not. Well, on my Z Flip 4, the glass shattered. And I actually could probably put up some photos here. If you look here on the photo, this, the glass just shattered in the middle. And I had to you know, get an insurance on the phone two different times. And by the third time, we were having to, <laughs> to send the phone back in. They just didn't have any left in stock because they were having to, to insurance so many phones. They give me a free Z Flip 5. And I'm like, I know it's going to happen again. So I moved to iOS. Anyway, back to the screen. The screen 6.9 inches 1080p P OLED, but it's also 165 hertz. First ever phone to be proper LTPO, one to 165. And I believe the the Razer had it last year, but now this, but now the Razer here has it on both the the main screen and the cover display. So now we're going to move on to the camera segment. Oh, the last thing about the refresh rate. For some reason, the refresh rate isn't going to 165 like it's supposed to. You know, it can go up to 165, it's just not doing it. Like, as I'm swiping around through, uh, through everything here, it's stuck at 90. You might not be able to see that there, but it's stuck at 90, and you're just scrolling left to right. It's stuck at 90. And, like, every once in a while when you're going through the home screen, it'll go up to 120, but that's the max. When you're gaming one on, it'll go up to 120. So I'm almost wondering if you have to play a game like Real Racing 3, which has no FPS limit by EA Sports, that can go up to 165 and above. I wonder, yeah, I don't know. It's weird. But I'm pretty sure Motorola, hopefully they get the Kings worked out here pretty soon, but yeah. And of course, like most other phones here on the camera, you can of course, of course you can see yourself. So there you are. That's the camera man right there. And of course, they have, it actually has a proper camcorder mode. So when you enter camcorder mode, oh, it looks like we're recording now. So here we are in camcorder mode. So of course, you can see the preview right here. But on my end, this is what it looks like. So I can currently see myself, and you have the full widescreen on the smaller display. And on the side there, you actually have a bunch of quick controls. I'm pretty sure it's like tap to pause or play play video, you know, some quick controls. I, I don't know how to use this thing quite yet. So that way, when you're in camcorder mode, you can probably, you can just use your thumb and do some quick adjustments. So you can probably zoom in, zoom out, adjust this and that. So yeah, they're very cool stuff. And, for, and oh, and here's another good thing. So now that we've talked about most of the software and and uh, main specs of the phone, we're gonna go to build quality. This is where things get interesting. So originally, Gallup, Samsung with the Sam, with the Galaxy Z Flip 3, they, that was the, the best redesign, probably in my opinion, the best designed flip phone that Galaxy ever made because First of all, it actually had the bristles on the. That's when they put the bristles inside the phone to keep the dust out, and it kept the dust out. The phone was waterproof. It had the multi-positional hinge. the The crease was still really bad, but the ultra thin glass didn't shatter. No problems. But with the latest Z, Z Flip Six, if you watch the Jerry Rig Everything's Teardown video, you're gonna see that dust got onto the inside of the phone almost instantly. Yet the phone is rated IP48, so it actually has a dust rating, but it's worse. Yeah, that doesn't make any sense. Whereas this phone, is it 5.8, 6.8? It's not 6.8. It's, it's just X8. X8. Yeah. yeah. So of course, IP, the company that makes it, that gives these phones the official rating, you got to pay a lot of money just to get a dust rating. So Mortal's probably not bothering it with it. But this phone has bristles on the inside and it's waterproof. So you don't have to worry about any dust. And like I just said, it's waterproof, which is just phenomenal. And just like the Galaxy... The multi-positional hinge, no problems there. Of course, it's not quite as stable as the Galaxy. Of course, you, of course, we have this poetic case, there, but that's hardly affecting it. So, like, it's multi-positional hinge. It's stable. Side-mounted fingerprint scanner. Really, there's not much more you can ask for. And right here, is it a 15 megapixel shooter? Yeah. So, 15 megapixel main main shooter with a 2x optical telephoto, which I think is a great touch versus going. A wide camera and an ultra wide camera. That doesn't make much make much sense. 
and the actual main camera sensor is already a bit wider than your regular wide sensor or main sensor on a phone so it, so it almost doubles as an ultra wide it's a good compromise right in the middle and of course a, a good 2x telephoto is just going to be great for zoom shots so overall generally a pretty soft camera system and yeah that's been it and that's going to about, about cover and of course this phone has a loud speaker system let me tell you GSM Arena, if you just want if you want any possible specs you could ever see on your phone, go to GSM Marina. When they tested this phone, this was one of the loudest smartphones they've ever tested. I don't know how, but it could be because of the massive speaker grill right up there on the top, just holes all the way across. Of course, you know, you, you just have your classic speaker you, you have your classic speaker grill on the bottom, front firing, top, bottom firing, bottom like normal, but this thing's really loud. So speak so speakers are not a problem. And How's the selfie camera? 48 megapixels, I believe. 32, I believe. Anyway, good selfie camera. That's all there is to it. 45 watt fa fast charging. And yeah, uh, that's pretty much all there is to it. So as of right now, I don't have any major concerns with this phone. It's no ultra thin glass to crack or shatter. My only concern right now is, you know, they market, they were marketing the heck out of that 165 hertz display, but I haven't seen this. Have you seen this thing go to 165 once yet? I think it's only with supported games or apps, maybe. But yeah, and again, real racing is is a off oh, first of all, it's an awesome game by EA Sports that you can play awesome mobile racing game, no FPS limit. So of course, that was one of the only games you could play on like the red on any of the red magics that go up to 165. I mean, they went down to 120. That would that's a whole different talk. But yeah, overall, motor, this is just kind of like an initial unboxing, just kind of going over the base features. So. Yeah, very impressive. This is, in my opinion, the world's best flip phone as of right now. Yeah, the uh, yeah, sure, the Oppo Find N is actually pretty solid from Oppo. It, it's probably the second best, but ain't nobody, ain't nobody got a co cover screen like, ain't nobody got a cover screen like this where you can literally use the apps like a heck calculator. Like, you can literally do everything on this phone. You can see all your notifications and everything. And it literally works like a phone on a home screen. There's all your, there's all your apps in the tree. Like, it's a full-on phone. Twelve gigs of RAM. Yeah, great phone. So, in my opinion, this is the best flip phone in the world right now, and great price. So, great job, Motorola. And of course, only time's gonna tell if this one's gonna have any durability issues or any possible defects. But overall, overall, this one, this one's phenomenal. But I held the phone like this, and it worked. All right, of course, someone has to run into you as it starts. So, welcome to another little Tech Talk episode. Actually, quite a few, a few things have been happening lately, and that's why we're going to record another one. The last year, the smartphone industry was kind of boring. AI was still in its infancy stages. HN2 to HN3, minor improvements. The Google Tensor still sucked. The flip phones were still the flip. The flip phones were still flipping. New side phone. Yeah, really nothing. Really no crazy new updates, but there's been some interesting developments lately. So, I'll let you start off yeah so ai is the big deal right now and of course you know apple intelligence just came out and you know the funny thing is all these companies are rolling you know their ai tech out but that'll be in an upcoming update so they want you to buy the hardware you know in hopes that it's you know they're gonna dole it out to you you know we everyone jumped in with the Google Pixel 9s, which are just now finally rolling out, actually, in the next day or two. And uh, and Apple did something similar with their voice calling mode. So, of course, you have the standard voice calling mode and then voice isolation, which is phenomenal. I I basically, I had these crappy earbuds that I used for about a year, and I don't ride my bike, and the wind noise was so loud, he couldn't stand it. But then with the voice isolation mode on iOS, I could ride my bike, I can be using the restroom and washing dishes. I can do anything and it just cuts everything out. Phenomenal. But they also promised a wide spectrum mode to naturally allow pretty much nature sounds and everything come through. And it it's always sat out there. It said this item was coming soon. Never came out. Still to this day, it's never came out. Now it's just standard voice isolation when you go on a phone call. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, I it, it's like the companies were having trouble coming up with new things to hype this year. I mean, Google went really deep in 
it was all about the AI software features, of course. You know, they will have certain unique features on the Googles this year, like uh, Pixel Studio. You know, there'll be certain little things that you can't get on your Motorola or your Samsung. But, like, for example, you know, Samsung has kind of been coming out first with the AI features, it seems like, and then Motorola is the first phone to have Gemini baked into the new Hello UI and and also in the Motorola camera app, I will disclose I'm a Motorola fanboy, but it's true, you know, you can have Google enhanced inside the camera app. Like there's, you don't have to do any post-processing because it's going to do it literally in real time. So yeah. And again, with Samsung being the first on my S22 Ultra back in 2022, they released this thing called, I think they just call it the magic editor now, but it's basically just this thing that you could buy not buy this is this app that you could download on the galaxy store and basically it would just analyze your photo using ai and you just have these you just literally have this one slider slide it this way to adjust it more this way brighter and poppier or this way for more saturated and more contrast it was super simple and it was samsung's first ever way of basically leading the charge when it came to, to ai and like you saying well, motorola was next and samsung well samsung was the first and google was still you know lagging behind like normal um, but the thing that since we're on this topic of AI and that's kind of the overall theme of this tech talk episode is I think that the AI has probably given photography and video the biggest leap, especially on the new iPhone 16 series and the 16 pro series. Once they roll out all those updates between now and I think next like, January, February at the latest, probably before their spring uh, mid-cycle, you know, hoopla. Um, and, of course, you could say on the Android side, like, the new translate features, uh, some of the editing. So, I guess, depending on what type of AI things bring more, uh, you know, quality to your life, you may pick one or the other. But, I mean... For me personally, since I'm a photographer, videographer, and all that stuff, you know, we're getting more and more to the point where you could argue that you don't need that DSLR, that mirrorless camera. You know, you can just grab your newest phone, whether it's Android or especially iPhone now, and you've got, like, let's take the iPhone 16 Pro since that's the newest phone that just came out. Uh, you know, they, they've got the technology on the four mics. So you got all these modes coming now where like, it's like studio mode. Like it almost sounds as good as having an external mic connected to your, you know, your apparatus. So there's it's some really cool stuff coming up. And also on the note of, it's got to have the coffee. <laughs> and of course on the note of cam cameras on Apple, of course you probably already know this, who was probably the main thing that they were talking about and just will not shut up about with their newest conference is the little capture button. Like over here on my 15 Pro Max, of course right here, we got the action button, as you can see, right there on the side, no, that's the power button. Of course you got the action button and then your two volume rockers. But now on this side, further down, you have a capture button and you can, and it's actually touch capacitive. So like you, like you can double press on this, this swipe left and right. And it's a really cool new feature. Just proven how Apple at this point is trying to make your iPhone the main, the main, basically your all-in-one pho phone, bib, you know, photography device, and like they're basically trying to make the iPhone the only thing you need to bring with you everywhere. Whether you're a professional photo photographer, just a daily social media user, or a gamer, like, like they also just included a game mode on iOS 18, which I'm a big fan of because on on Samsung phones. They had all these features you could pick from. You could completely turn off all optimizations and just have your phone run wild, turning off GOS, which was kind of awesome. And then they also have this priority mode, which basically just shuts down everything in the background. Like if you have crappy cell service or like the or like photos trying to upload in the background, it would cut those tasks off. So that way, you or your game that's requiring mobile service would have as much service as it would need, and it would fix the problems. And I'll, iOS has some sort of thing. I mean, it's just game mode on or off. That's it. Pretty simple in classic iOS fashion, but yeah. And uh, before we 
in this episode, uh, you know, we always hit random news that only the most, uh, you know, enthusiastic tech nerds are going to care about. But I thought I'd bring up <clears throat> the whole thing of the upcoming SOCs. There's been a lot of little bits and pieces of news coming out about, like, for example, you know, 8 Gen 4. Uh, Snapdragon is getting rolled out next month, and I think the new uh, Find X, the X8, the Find X Pro, the X8 Pro is going to be the first phone, I believe, with that chip in it. Um, but I see trouble in the water ahead coming in, like, let's say, maybe end of next year into 2026, because, you know, it was already rolled out that, like, the Pixel 11 could possibly be coming with the, uh, you know, TSMC 2 nanometer technology. Now, as far as TSMC is concerned, that's possible, but there was just news where Samsung has basically given up on working on their 2 nanometer fabrication right now because... And actually, and actually back in May, Samsung was claiming that the, their Exynos 20... All right, we're just going to start at the beginning. Basically, the Exynos chips were sucking really bad. And especially with the Exynos 2200, they, they realized that's it. They completely cut it off, and, and they had to start from the ground up. And copying, and copying TSMC wasn't working anymore. So they completely rebuilt the foundations from, from the bottom to the top, focusing on optimizing their Exynos chips to work perfectly with their one UI operating system, which is what they should have done in the beginning. And back in May, they claimed that the Exynos 2600 on the Galaxy S26 Ultra would be their t first two nanometer made chip, but I, and that was, and that was a few months ago. So maybe they've gone on the ground with it, but as far as I know, Samsung is still working on their two nan two nanometer fabric fabrication process, and it's still on the note of the two nanometer fabrication process. TSMC is actually three months ahead of schedule now on their t on their two nanometer two nanometer fabrication process, and they're going to start building A19 Pro chips. I believe I believe it is. Here very soon actually because so and of course who's been the most loyal customer to them for the last decade Apple so no surprise they're gonna be getting first dibs but only the 17 Pro and Pro Max models are going to be getting the a 19 Pro chips that are on the 2 nanometer process so the 17 Pro Max will have a 2 nanometer, two nanometer chip in it so it's practically all but confirmed at this point then oh add to that a little more interesting news because of the state of things in the world as it is. See, you know, the Biden administration was trying to get uh, TSMC to move all their stuff stateside. Well, they only agreed to bring, I think, four, to four slash five nanometer yeah. technology fabs over here and up. So what has leaked out? Well, it's public information now. So with that in mind, the U.S. has kind of turned to Samsung, and that's why Samsung had brought their top engineers over here to Texas to their factory, and that's why they were trying to get the two and the three nanometer stuff working so that the U.S. would have options like our government, let's say, would have options, but that's kind of failed for now, so hopefully they can get it working again. And those engineers went back to Korea temporarily to kind of go back to the drawing board and see what's going to work. Um, the other bit of news I heard was Samsung's future strategy is what they want to do is keep running Snapdragon chips from Galaxy, but there's a catch. So here's what's going to be happening if this works out. And this is one reason Samsung is so frustrated with their, uh, you know, two nanometer technology only producing 10 to 20 percent uh, quality product. And is what they want to do is they want to do Snapdragon chips, but they want Qualcomm to allow them to fabricate them on their two nanometer process, not TSMC, so they save production costs. But it's still a Snapdragon chip. And then their Exynos chips, which are still going to apparently be making, because I think the 2500 is coming out, they're going to maybe use those in the lower or upper mid range phones or tablets. You know, Samsung's got this plan, but they want to do all their own manufacturing if they can get this 
these issues worked out. So, you know. Yeah, and of course, it's kind of a tall task because the whole reason the Snapdragon, or Qualcomm, I should say, went to TSMC in the first place was be because of the absolute train wreck. The 888 was okay because the Cortex X8 and then the Cortex A78 and A55 chips that that ARM produced were the best chips that ARM ever ever produced, the most efficient, top to bottom. And then with the HN1, just a complete trainer. ARM's cores were extremely inefficient. Samsung's process was extremely terrible, and it just made it just made every single Android an overheating piece of garbage, basically. And Qualcomm was like, we've had enough, and they immediately went and knocked on a TSMC sit. A door and TSMC welcomed welcome them with open arms, They're like whoa, like welcome back to the family. And then it was after all all that that Samsung completely shut down their chip division unit, started building it up from the bottom up. But they have such a terrible reputation at this point that what are people going to think once chips start being built on the process to get this is again? And keep in mind, really the only chip still being made on Samsung's processes is Google, and their chips still suck, even though Samsung claims they're getting better, they're not, really. And the only reason that the newest Google Pixels have great battery life is because is mainly because they put a huge vapor chambers, which is good for Google, put a huge vapor chambers inside of the Pixel 9 Pro, which is actually doing a really good job of distri distributing the heat, therefore, better battery life. And I want to make one comment, because again, we, we try to bring the news on this show that you don't really hear or get anywhere else, because for some reason, it doesn't seem like anyone wants to talk about these really finally, but if you're an enthusiast, especially about the building blocks of tech, then this stuff excites you and you want to know this information, but so, uh, yeah, so I, I think Samsung's fabrication processes, you know, they have that new wafer technology, supposedly starting with 40 nanometer chips that do keep the thermals down, and I will give them some credit that that's improved some, but like Nathan just said, you know, when Samsung, I think it was the Fan Edition S23 or the S22, whichever one they recently put the 8th gen, or no, they, I think they put the Exynos. Anyway, they, they had maybe two different phones. They put the 8th gen 1 in just to use them, and then they had the Exynos 2200 or something. But they put the biggest vapor chamber they've ever put in the S phone. And guess what? The phone still gets pretty warm despite that. So we'll just have to see, you know. So, yeah, you could literally have when when the Snapdragon 8 Gen 5 chips and beyond come out, you could literally, we could start having two versions again, one made by TSMC and one made by Samsung just for the Samsung products. So, yeah, get ready. Yeah, I yeah, so it almost seems like we're going back in time, but with just more modern technologies, because that's how it actually was back in the day. You had the Qualcomm chips made of TSMC, so of course you have the Samsung made chips, and then you had the TSMC made chips, and, TSMC, and the TSMC ones are almost always better. And Apple actually had some of their old chips made on Samsung processes, and some of their old chips made on TSMC processes. And I'm pretty sure that ended with like the with the, the iPhone five or iPhone or iPhone 6, it ended pretty early, and they almost didn't primarily went to TSMC right away. But the last thing before we get up here is, first of all, this video is being recorded on the Motorola Razor Plus, because because here pretty soon, it's either it's already been released, or it's going to be released after this, after this video, or if you're watching this like a day after this thing's been uploaded, it's probably already up. Anyway, I just released my, I guess, early, early review, if you want to call it, call it that, slash unboxing video for the Motorola Razor Plus. And I just figured we might as well use the camcorder mode on this thing since I forgot my actual recording stand that holds this thing with the studio light and everything. So I'm like, well, we might as well just use this. Let's go ahead and record it. So if the video sucks, I guess, <laughs> well, I guess, you know, it's Motorola's fault, but if it looks good, then it looks good. I mean, on the little pre preview camera I'm looking at right here on the cover display, it looks pretty good to me. So, and I'll, and I'll just one final note here. For some reason, Samsung on the latest foldables, the the rating, the IP rating went up to IP4X. You think, oh great, dust rating. No, it got worse. If you watch Jerry Everything's review, and more importantly, the teardown, you would have seen that after the durability test, after he tore the phone down, so much dirt inside of it. Dirt getting into the internals everywhere. But then on 
the Z Flip 3 and 4, they actually properly made the hinge, so guess what? No dirt got inside of it. And with the Motorola, with the IPX8, no dirt's getting on the inside of it, no ultra, no ultra thin glass to shatter. So overall, the Motorola has the better, better battery life. I guess you can't really say better performance because the Galaxy, because the the Flip and the Fold have the four Galaxy HN3, the best Android chip, just just out right now. So performance is definitely better on them. But yeah, overall, Razer Plus is definitely the better foldable. Yeah, and um, yeah, that's about it. So I think that that's a good wrap on yeah. this episode. So. And of course, Apple, and of course, like I'm not really too bummed about about Apple Intelligence coming out. Because iOS 18 was such a major upgrade, and actually, I'm probably gonna do uh, just a straight up iOS 18 review because, like, I hardly ever do software reviews because you know the big guys, you know, do a great job with that stuff. But it's such a major upgrade over iOS 17 that I almost feel like I have to do like just a baseline review of iOS 18 because it's just phenomenal. Like, how do you get an LED flashlight that was put into a phone from six years years ago, like the iPhone XS Max, and how do you make it? be a flashlight be able to be a floodlight and like a headlight all at the same time i don't know how it works but it's some cool stuff so yeah all right we'll see you in the next episode uh, press the button do something <laughs> all right so i guess this is just some random test video to, to compare to the motorola razor plus of course on the king of video the iphone 15 pro max just to kind of compare audio and general general colors. You want to talk a little bit, just kind of you know get see how our different voices sound. Yeah, I thought the Motorola footage was really pretty clean and clear. So I guess we'll find out after we watch this footage. Yeah.